So this morning we're just going to share what God, I believe what God's laid upon my heart. Uh, the Word of God does not promise us a bed of roses. Anybody notice that as a Christian? <laughs> I feel really very sorry for people there that, you know, when they're just told, well, you get born again and all your problems are, are over. I don't know about you, but that didn't happen for me. It, I found out that I, I entered into a warfare. I found out that I entered into something there that I'd never, ever dreamed of, that uh, the enemy would uh, come and try to stop me and, uh, you know, do things against me and everything like that. I found out that I had things in my life that I didn't realize I had. <laughs> I had a lot of problems in my, anybody else have problems when you got born again? I don't know about you, but I needed to get born again. I lived in the world for 27 years uh, before I got born again and I'd learned a lot of bad habits. Anybody else learned bad habits? Am I just talking about me? Am I the only person on this island? Is my name Robertson Crusoe? <laughs> no. I believe that we're all on this island and uh, you know, but God doesn't promise us a bed of roses, but he does say this. He does say this, he says, no weapon formed against us will prosper. That's what he says, amen. He says, every tongue that rises against us in judgment, you shall or you are to condemn. Whatever rises against you in judgment or whatever comes against you, we're to condemn it. That's Isaiah 54 verse 17. Then he said this, he says, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me upon my throne as I also overcame. This surprised me a lot when I read this originally, that Jesus had to overcome. I just thought Jesus would walk through life without a problem. I just thought he'd be able to just, you know, because he was Christ, that no, no devil would even try to stop him. But I found out that he was attacked more than anybody else. That the enemy tried to stop him more than anything else. Because he thought, if I can stop this man of God, if I can stop this blood from flowing, if I can stop this man from pray, paying the price, if I can stop this man from rising again, I've won. And so the enemy did whatever he could to take him off course, to get him away from what God has planned for his life was. But he says, to him who overcomes, I'll grant to sit with me upon my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And then he said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's Revelation 3, 21 and verse 22. Bible also says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Out of them all. And I, I want to just say this morning that when you get born again, when you give your life to Christ, you enter into something that is so foreign to the natural man, you enter into the school of the Spirit. You enter into something that where God now wants you to understand not to be led by the flesh, but to be led by the Spirit. Not to be moved by what you see, but to be moved by what you know. And what Joe was talking about this morning and things like that, some of those things are foreign to the natural mind. Those things are at war with the, with the natural thinking person. Because, you know, it, it's, it's not that, that way. Everything that Jesus did, that communion, really, that we've just had today, is the most, one of the most powerful things that any Christian will ever do on this planet. And, and we do need to have our eyes opened and understand the significance and the fulfillment of what God did in, in that. When God raised Christ from the dead and seated him on his own right hand, far above principalities and powers and dominion and might. And then he took us and seated us with him far above principalities and powers. But we sometimes, as we've heard us said many times, scratch around like a turkey down here when God wants us to fly so far above the circumstances and the situations of life. Most people are not led by the Spirit, they're led by the things of life, the feelings, the, the, what goes on in life. But I thank God today that, that God is raising up a standard, amen? And so, you know, I believe that, that God is doing all these things. So we enter into the school of, of the Spirit. I believe God's wanting to des so desperately to take us out of Egypt or out of the flesh into the promised land which God had promised us. God is waiting uh, to open the eyes of our understanding to pour out the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and revelation that we if we can only capture this, that then I believe we would totally change. Do you believe that? Yes. 
So Father, right now, I ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to help us understand, my God, the things that you have really prepared for us. Lord, as Joe was speaking this morning about this great communion, and so many times this communion is just something that we do in church. It's just a, another cracker and another uh, little bit of uh, grape juice. But Father, today it is so, 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 so much more. And Father, we're asking you today to open the eyes of our understanding, to bring us a spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom, my God, that goes with it, that we might know you, that we might know this one who gave his life for us, that we might, as men and women, my God, that we might just, just come before you and say, God, I just want to open my life to you. I, I want you to, God, because we have an ear to hear, we want to hear exactly what the Spirit of God is saying in this time that we live. And we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. That's who I am. And you know, sometimes people, you know, when we go, how do you feel, whatever it is, friend, we've got to realize I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm not the person that some 40 odd years ago gave his life to Christ. I'm a different person now. I'm a brand new person. Old things are passed away. Old habits, old ways are become new. I'm a new man. I'm a new creature. And that's only done by the Spirit of God. I, I thank God that I'm not the same man. I thank God I'm a different man. I want you to open up your Bibles to uh, the book of Zechariah. And Zechariah was in a situation here where he's in the spirit, but he's talking to an angel. And the angel of God was talking to him and, and sharing many things. And verse 18, he says, Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. And I said to the angel who talked to me, What are these? And he answered me, These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. See, when, when the Spirit of God is speaking about horns here, He's talking about kingdoms or He's talking about powers. These four kingdoms and these four powers came against the church and they scattered the people. Friend, I want to tell you today that there's an enemy that wants to cause you to be scattered. There's an enemy there that wants to break fellowship with God Almighty. There's an enemy there that wants to come to, to cause strife in your life. There's a power, there's a force on this planet that wants to take us away from the things of God and bring us back into the things of the natural, where we react and where we do things the way that the world does them. But then he says, it goes on and he, and he says, then he showed me four craftsmen, showed me four craftsmen. I believe that these four craftsmen are the, are the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost and the Spirit-filled church that have had their eyes opened. Amen. <laughs> They're coming against the enemy. He showed me four craftsmen. And, uh, and I said, what are these coming to do? So he said, these are the horns or these are the kingdoms. These are the powers that scattered Judah so that no one could lift his head. So that no one could lift his head. He poured the wrath and the fury. But the craftsmen are coming to terrify them. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to give the Lord a clap for that. The craftsmen are coming to terrify the enemy. Amen. You know, the Bible says this. It says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. In other words, that means run in terror. You see, he cannot handle the church that has come to a revelation that knows that greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. And no weapon formed against me will prosper and we can stand our ground and we can declare in the presence of enemies and no matter what it is that Jesus Christ is Lord and that the devil is a liar and a thief and he will not conquer us. He will not overcome us. The craftsmen are coming. The craftsmen are coming and they're going to terrify the enemy. I praise God for that. I get excited about that. They're going to cast the horns of the nations that lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. He's coming to destroy the enemy and I think that's an amazing thing. No one could lift up their head. No one could lift up their head. What a horrible situation to be in. The Spirit of God must deliver us from wrong thinking. See, if you think wrong, 
That's how you are. If you think that, that you deserve what you've got and accept it, you'll, you'll take it. But if you realize that there's an enemy that's come against you and that you've got to change the way you think, well, I want to tell you, then you start to rise up. Amen. I want you to have a look with me in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4. There's an amazing story here. And it's a story that, uh, you know, I, I believe that the disciples, God had gathered up all these disciples. He had these uh, 12 guys. And the Word of God tells us that he, he used to gather them together and they would all listen to as the crowd was there. And he'd speak to the crowd in parables. And without a parable, he did not speak to them. He was sharing things about the, the lost sheep and different things, different, uh, different ten virgins and, and all these other things that, that he was sharing in, in this parable form. And then when he'd finished that, he would, he would take the disciples aside and he'd start to explain what he was saying to them. But you see, one of the things that I believe with the disciples, that they were so locked in to the thoughts of the day, to the traditions of the day, to the religion of the day, the, the, what people were saying. They were so locked into that, that even as Jesus himself began to speak to the disciples and, and started to explain, he could see these boys are not getting this. They're not catching what I say. You see, the disciples, they came to Jesus one time there and they said things like this. They saw a man that was blind. And so, you know, they thought, we'll just show Jesus how spiritual we really are and how much knowledge we have. Because this is what the, the Pharisees say, and this is what the religious leaders say, and this is what the rulers say. This is what the religious people are saying. And so they came to Jesus, they said, hey, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And they were expecting, you know, well, you know, he might say one of these good answers. I said, oh man, you're so smart. I didn't realize you understood all this stuff. But Jesus would have shocked him to death when he said, neither. Neither this man nor his parents sinned that is born blind, but we might be able to show forth the glory of God by healing this man. You see, a lot of people when they're sick, they think it's the judgment of God. They think this and they think that and they think all wrong things. But I want to tell you today that God wants to glorify His Son, Lord Jesus Christ, by stretching forth His hand to heal all those who are sick and those who are oppressed of the devil. Amen. Amen. That's what God wants to do. And so Jesus thought, well, what am I going to do with these boys? I've got these boys here and, and, and I've got you know, some things that I need to do on this planet while I'm here. So he said to the boys, he said, hey, let's cross over to the other side. And you know, some of the things that God's spoken to you and me about is when he says, let's do this, we have got no idea what he's got in store for us. You got no idea. We just think, oh, I would imagine the disciples would have thought that's a good idea. We haven't been in the boat for a while. <laughs> It'd be nice to get out on the lake again. Be nice just to feel the salt air in your face and, you know, the breeze and so forth. And it'd be wonderful. But you see, Jesus had a twofold plan. He wanted to go over to the other side because there was something that he needed to do over there. He could have gone on his own. I want to tell you, Jesus could save the world on his own if he wanted to, but he wants us to do it with him. Amen. He wants his church to be involved in this great victory. He wants the church to rise up and be part of the victory of Christ Jesus. We are not just a spectators, we are participators, amen? We are part of the answer to this world's needs right now. And Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. And as He said these words, they all got in their little boats and goodness knows what else. Uh, it says this, it says, I'm just going to read a verse from verse 33 of chapter 4. And with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to bear it. And without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. And when they had left uh, the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves uh, beat into the boat so it was already filling. But he was asleep in the stern. Can I say this? Some key things that we've got to understand 
Jesus is in your boat. I don't care how rough or how turbulent or what's going on around your life today. I don't know, there's a lot of things that are happening in this world right now that we're living in. There's chaos all over the place. There's things that are happening that should never happen. As somebody was saying the other day, it is almost, you, you feel horrible when you listen to the news. Murders and goodness knows what else. We've, we find right now where, where our Queensland government is starting to rise up and saying there's enough of this and there's enough of that. And they're standing up against, uh, uh, what is it? Um, Domestic violence, they're standing up against that. And you know, sometimes we, the church, can just sit passively by and say, isn't that terrible that all those people are dying? Isn't that terrible this is happening? Friends, it's time that we got up off our blessed assurance. It's time that we, the church, got up and began to pray and began to get hold of God and start to say, why should, should the Labour Party whatever it is on Queensland, be the leaders of this, of this nation. I want to tell you, it's the church that's got to rise up. We're the people that have got to stand on our two feet. And we're the ones that are going to start to declare, enough is enough. We're not going to tolerate this anymore. We're going to believe for the windows of heaven to be opened upon the church, that God's healing power will be restored again. But you see, friend, what's got to happen is the church has got something like what happened to these disciples. They had an encounter. They had a place where Jesus began to show himself and that they found out that this Jesus wasn't who they thought he was. He wasn't just one of the, another prophet. He wasn't just another uh, good man. He wasn't just one of the John the Baptist or Elijah or Jeremiah. This man here that they were following, they followed him because they saw the miracles and they saw the provision. They saw what was going on. But Jesus said, this is not enough. I want you to know that I am the Son of God. I want you to know that all power has been given to me, that I've got power to cast out devils and tread on serpents and scorpions. I want you to know and I want you to see what I can do. Now the disciples were fishermen, people of the sea, and they got in this boat and the Bible says that they feared for their lives. This was not just some ordinary little storm, this was the mega storm. The boat was already beginning to fill up with water. They go over to Jesus, and I don't believe for one minute that Jesus was asleep, but they says he was, I think he would have had one eye open. I reckon he would have been looking to see what the, how their boys were going to react. I, I believe that he was looking for something that he's looking for today. It's called faith. Which the church has lost. Okay to talk like this? He was looking for faith. They wake him up and they said, don't you care, we're perishing. And Jesus stood up in the midst of that storm and he spoke to the wind and he spoke to the sea and he said, peace be still. Friend, I want to tell you, Jesus was demonstrating what you and I could do because somewhere else in the book of John 14, he says, these things that I do, you can do also. And I don't believe for one minute that the storms that are in the natural are necessarily what he wanted us to understand, but he wanted us to understand whatever circumstance comes against you, whatever tries to take you off course, whatever's coming against you, you can stand up in my name and you can speak my name and you can speak to that storm and you can say, peace! And it will happen. And it will happen, amen. Amen. Here he is, he's standing there and he began to cry out and he began to, and he rebuked the wind and the sea. And the disciples got such a shock that they started to question. And I pray today that we as a church would start to ask again, who can this man be that I've chosen to give my life to? Who can this man be that I've chosen to follow? that I've chosen to believe, I've chosen to trust in. And I want to tell you, friends, God wants to open the eyes of our understanding that we won't see just some little, uh, you know, Jesus there, but we'll see the Christ, the Son of the living God. We'll see the King of glory, hallelujah. We'll see Him there shining tall and bright, strong and powerful, amen. You see, the world 
thinks that the church uses Jesus as a crutch. But I want to tell you, Jesus is our answer. He is the answer for the world today. And that's what I believe that God wants to bring a demonstration to the power of God back into the church where the church begins to rise again, where the church begins to stand to its feet again and starts to acknowledge that our God is God. He is almighty God, amen. And put everything else aside and and grab a hold of God with everything that we have. And then Jesus turned to the disciples and He said, why are you so fearful How is it that you have no faith? And it says, And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Bible says, And they came to the other side. The other side. You know what, friends? I believe that many of us, Jesus wants us to go to the other side. He He said to the disciples at one stage, He said, Let down your nets on the other side. Some of the things that we need are on the other side. If you're in the wrong, looking in the wrong direction, if you're looking in the wrong places, you'll never find it if it's on the other side. If it's in a different place. I want to tell you, I believe that God wants to take every one of us to a different place. He wants to take us to another place in Him. He wants to be able to reveal Himself to us. He wants to show Himself strong to us, amen. He is no wimp. I don't, some of these pictures I see of Jesus, they are a false picture of Christ, amen. I reckon his muscles would be bulging, hallelujah. I reckon he would be a man of all men, amen. He is no some little wimpy thing with his heart in his hand. I want to tell you what he's got in his hand is a sword. (laughs) He's come to do war and he's come to battle for you. He's come to fight for you. He's come to give you victory. He's come to heal you. He's come to deliver you. He's come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. He's come to overthrow the enemy. And overthrow him he did. And the earth began to shake. I love that part. The stone was rolled away. He is alive. <laughs> he is alive. Anyhow, he's risen from the dead. He is alive. What an amazing Savior we serve. He wants to reveal himself. And when they get to the other side, and, and, and I would imagine as a, as a person that's been in some rough waters, in the natural and in the waters. Anybody been through some natural ones and some watery ones too? You get into those things and, and, and all of a sudden you, you reach the other side and, and, and you think, my God, I'm, I've, I've arrived, I've made it. <laughs> you beauty. You just come through that thing and you think, man. But he says, no, I got more. I got more that I want, I want to reveal to you. I want you to understand that the one that you serve is greater than any demonic force that could ever come against you. Not just the wind and the sea and the waves and the goodness knows what, but no matter what weapon is formed against you, it shall not prosper. If you dare to believe my word, if you dare to believe in me, if you'll use my name, if you'll use what I've given to you, my word against the enemy, And they get to the other side and I reckon they would have still been a little bit cranky. They were men, they were fishermen. They would have thought, man, he told us we've got no faith and we're full of fear. He's right, but I don't like it. (laughs) How many people don't like it when God's right? (laughs) Come on. We don't like it when God's right. We wanted to put a Band-Aid on our wound, but God wants to heal it. He just doesn't want to leave us basting in our own self-pity he wants to deliver us from it they get to the other side and they're and they're they're, they're, they think man you beauty and and Jesus starts walking next minute this maniac somebody in the tombs had been living in the tombs cutting himself and dear Jesus let's read it chapter 5 verse 1 Then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadareans. And when he came out of the boat, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, had his dwellings among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. 
because he'd often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him and cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. And Jesus said to him, Come out of the man unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And this, these demons begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. Amazing thing here, it's an amazing story. As Jesus stands in the midst of, of the enemy, as he stands there, there is this legion of demons. This man who they'd, had cried out, tormented the, the town, terrified the people. They came out, they'd, they'd go after him, they'd chain him up, but he'd just smash the chains. Night and day he was in the tombs where, crying out. He was in a place, in an atmosphere where God wasn't there. He was in an atmosphere of torment and, and he tormented people. In Matthew 8, 28, it speaks of another thing, but it says that there was two demon-possessed men. I believe it's the same story. One of them was just an evangelist. <laughs> But it speaks about these demon-possessed people. It talks about, about, it says that these demon-possessed, they were fierce and, and ugly and horrible and they stopped people from going through. They, they blocked the way. And I believe that what Jesus was doing here, he, there was a situation where these demonic forces were stopping the people from entering into something that God wanted them to enter into. But these demonic forces were blocking the way and Jesus was on assignment and He said, I've got to go and I've got to break that stronghold. I've got to make a way through the enemy's territory here. And the enemy, when, when Jesus turns up and starts to speak to him, what's your name? My name is Legion, for there are many of us. And then he implored him, he said, please, whatever you do, don't send us out of the country because the devil has put us here to stop people from entering. But Jesus just spoke the word and says, come out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him. You see, I want to say this today, friends. The person that had the demon is not your enemy. The people that we think are our enemy are not our enemy. Our enemy is not flesh and blood, but our enemy is principalities and powers and dominions and might. Our enemy is the strongholds of the enemy. Our enemy is, is these sort of things that get into our mind and get into our thinking, get it all around us. But the man, the man was a man that had been demon possessed. Sure, the man was the one there that the people there, they tried to tame him. He wasn't a, an animal, but he acted like an animal. They tried to tame him. They tried to put him in chains. They tried to do all these sort of things and they could not do anything to him to help him. You see, friend, today, it's not a going against men. Not, 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 it's not a going against the Muslims or this one or the homosexuals. It's the spirit that's behind them that we've got to get hold of. And while you fight flesh and blood, guess what? You, all you'll do is have a few victories or something like that. But I want to tell you, we've got to rise up and we've got to start to attack the spirit world that's coming against the people of God. Amen. We've got to come against the spirit world. And that's what I want you to get your attention on today. It's not man, it's the spirit world. It's the principalities and powers and the, it's the dominions and that. Because once a man or a woman has been delivered, if you remember Mary Magdalene, she had seven demons cast out of her. She wasn't the problem, it was the demonic forces in her life that was a problem. This man, this legion of, that we call him legion, and, and here he is and Jesus has come out of him. And we know there that these demons, they said, oh, can, look, leave us in the country side here. We'll go into the swine that's over there. And Jesus said, go your way. We'll get rid of them while I'm at it. We know that the herdsmen, they were, they were blaspheming and shouting and yelling and screaming because all, these, all of their swine ran down the side of the hill and were choked in the sea. Disciples were, were, I would imagine, they were blown out at what they were watching, what they were seeing. 
This man from Galilee now, this man that they they thought was just a nice prophet, this man that that was just going to help them through life perhaps, now all of a sudden it's a whole different scenario. It's a whole different situation. They're starting to see him in his power and in his glory as he stood there and as he just spoke to the wind and the sea. Man, what an amazing video that's going to be. Spoke to the wind and the peace be still. Man, I haven't seen that before. Who can this man be? It's an amazing thing that the demonic force told him who he was. Told him it was the son of God. (laughs) Who can this man be? The demonic force comes running down and and identifies him as the son of God. I want to tell you, the devil knows what's ahead of him. He knows a lot more than we think he knows. But I want to tell you, he knows the power of God that that God wants to put into his church. He knows that God wants to open the eyes of our understanding. He knows that God wants to, to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we could imagine or think. We know these things. We know these things. And I believe, how many people believe that God's going to have his way? As the Bible goes on there, excuse me for not reading it, you can read it yourself. But for time's sake, I'm just going through this story. And here we find that this man, this man that has been delivered, the disciples were watching, there's things going on. Man, it was like, I don't know what. There was people being, you know, just being just pigs running down the hill, guys shouting at them, yelling at them, spitting at them. Carrying on, here's this naked man that was over there, beard, spit, crazy man. Oh, where, where's he now? And as they look around, here he was, seated, clothed in a sound mind. Seated, clothed in a sound mind. I don't know about you, but I would have thought, of some, what is going on here? You know, we had a move of the Spirit. A lot of people got touched by a move of the Spirit. People were rolling on the floor. People were just being touched by God. People were just an amazing manifestation. We'd go into, we'd go into meetings and I can't, look, honestly, please, my natural mind cannot comprehend things that happen. I can't comprehend it. But people would, would walk up and they'd have gold dust all over their hands. We had it over our hands. We'd, there was one little girl there. She was crying her eyes out at the thing and we said, what's wrong, honey? She said, God doesn't care for me. God doesn't love me. She was a naughty little girl, by the way. She was a naughty little girl. She said, well, God doesn't love me. God doesn't care for me. And people were around and were getting touched. She said, I haven't been touched. And I think Nancy said to her, have a look at your hands. She had a look at her hands and her hands were covered in gold dust. Now look, for the love of me, I cannot understand that, okay? I don't want to sound like as if I'm a, some crank or something like that. Looking, I don't go looking for gold dust. I don't go looking for diamonds. I don't go looking for all this sort of stuff. But it happened. And this little girl looked at her hands and the first word that came out of her mouth was not a nice word. And I'm not going to repeat it in the church. Don't ask me later. (laughs) But it wasn't a nice word. And all of a sudden, tears started rolling down her cheek. You see, we've got to meet God in the realm of the Spirit, not in the flesh. We must meet God in the realm of the Spirit, not in the flesh. Flesh can, you can have as much fleshy stuff as you like. I can tell you this morning, you got some beautiful people, you're lovely, you're this and you're that. And oh, you know, but I want to tell you this, God's really not pleased with us. How many people know there's more? Yes. And we've got to get hungry for God. We've got to get hungry for God. What I, people said, what was that all about? I said, really, I don't know. But what it did for me, it just showed this supernatural power of God. I remember going to a meeting and there was four or five hundred people in the meeting. I walked over to a group of people and about 300 of them just fell under the power of God. I never touched one of them. I looked around at the choir and they were going over the, off their pews. The, the, the drummer was going over the drummer. All I could see was his feet going over the back, over his stool. I was sitting there saying, what is going on? I had the, the, the guy that was the leader of the meeting was stuck in his chair. Now this all sounds stupid, doesn't, does that sound stupid? 
It sounded, why? But God just revealing himself. He wants to show himself strong. People were being healed. People were being delivered. Demonic forces were coming out of people. I remember in one person there, I was, I was just standing at the, I, I don't even think I'd started to preach, but I just stand there and next minute this woman yelled out and she started screaming at off. I thought, oh my God, I need that. Because in this time we'd had seven threats of fire. Bomb, bomb scares rather. Bomb scares. I had Charlie Chapman, dressed as Charlie Chapman. Look at him. I thought, my God, I've come, I've, this is the church. I said, I've, I've come to a madhouse. <laughs> Old Charlie had come up. <laughs> Were you there when Charlie was there? <laughs> Nancy remembers Charlie. He looked like Charlie Chapman. He walked like, he did everything. It's a madhouse. <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you these stories, but just crazy things happening. The church needs to, we need to get on our face again, amen. We need, to, we need to get a hold of God. We need to get a hold of the power of God. We need the anointing. If God wants to bring down diamonds and gold and goodness knows what else, He can do what He likes, amen. Is it okay for God to do what He wants to do? Is it all right for God to have His way in our lives? Friend, we, the church, need to rise up. We've got to stand our ground. And this, this man, as the disciples looked around, they would have thought, here's this man now clothed in a sound mind. And they were like, my goodness, what's going on here? And this man stood up and he walked over to Jesus and he said to Jesus, he said, can I, I'm going to come and follow you. He said, no, don't follow me, stay here. I, can I say this preacher's license? I believe that this man was a, 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 was a minister of the gospel that had been hit by the demonic forces because he's the first person, the only person, everybody else, he told him to shut up. But this is the first person he said to him, you stay here. And I believe it was the first vision of the church's purpose on this planet. He said, you stay here and tell the people, and he said some areas, the areas that he said were actually seven cities wasn't just a few people, it was seven cities, all the things that God has done for you. In other words, you're saying, and I believe this is what he's saying to the church, church, I want you on this earth to keep the way open. The way of salvation open. See, those things stop people, they block the people from going through. He said, I want you to stay here and make the way open. Keep the way open. Church, the only reason you and I live and breathe on this planet today is to be a voice, is to be one that says, keep it open. Go out there and tell everybody the good things that Christ has done for you, amen? Tell people the good things. This Jesus rose again. The stone has rolled away. The earth began to shake. What an amazing feat. What an amazing thing. Father, we just come to you this morning. We're your church. We're your people, my God. We, we want to know you. We, we, we have been led and, and we have been impacted by our thinking. And Lord, smart people, brilliant people, brains with, 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 with understanding of the natural things that that have been to universities and been here and there and studied and understand physics and all those other things. But God, you're asking them today to put that to one side and turn their attention upon you and receive you by faith. Receive you into their lives so that you can start this work in their lives. The enemy, I'm not too sure who caused the wind and the seas to become boisterous that day. Whether it was God that did it or whether it was the devil that did it. But all I know it was a thing I believe the enemy did it to try to stop Jesus from getting to the other side. Stop him from getting to the other side. The enemy will do whatever he can to stop you from going to the other side from out of the kingdom of this world to another kingdom, the kingdom of His dear Son. To be able to say, God, I don't understand, but 
But Lord, I've, I've made a bit of a mess in my life in the natural. And I'm, I'm willing today to put my trust in you. I'm willing to surrender to you. Give you my life. That's a big thing, friend. That's a big thing. It's a big thing. And if you're here today and the Spirit of God's touching you, and all oh, the war that's going on in your mind, the war that goes rages in your mind. It's like that sea that's just raging. We say, peace, be still. And let the people of God hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Let the people have an ear and hear what God is saying. Jesus is calling. Call sinners home. He's calling you home to meet with Him. While every head's bowed and every eye closed, you're in this place today. I just sense there are some. And you need to say, Lord, I surrender. I give you my life. I give you my life today. I give you my life. Your greatest possession I give to you. Father, you gave your greatest possession, your son, for me. And now I give you my life. Holy Spirit. I wonder if that's you today. Do you quickly slip up your hand if that's you today? Slip up your hand and say, that's me today. That's me today. That is me today. I want to do that. Just quickly slip it up. Just quickly slip it up. That's me today. Come before you throne. Lord, I give you my life. Let's stand in our feet.